Hello folks! Today I'd like to review my Eberly Stock Half Track Backpack. So first, what does it look like on me? So one second while I do a uh, slow 360 for you. Notice that this pack is a shallow but wide pack that keeps the load close to your back. My criteria in selecting this pack was that I wanted a bag that was a step up in size from the Maxpedition Zafar and the Triple Aught Fast Pack. But the bag still had to be extremely durable as bags that travel with me tend to get destroyed after about a year. The purpose of this bag is to serve as an extreme distance get home bag as I am frequently several hundred miles from home and would need more gear than my smaller packs can carry. Now to the specs on the bag. This is part of the Everly Stocks tactical line. It comes in black, coyote brown, dry earth, military green, unicam version 2, and multicam. This I believe is the coyote brown. It is made out of 1000 denier nylon with an internal lining as well. It has nice large zippers and the zipper pulls are a step up from the paracord pulls you sometimes see. According to the website, the dimensions of the bag are 24 inches tall by 11 inches wide by 7 inches deep. This gives 2,150 cubic inches or 35 liters of capacity. However, I find this to be extremely conservative and does not include the side pouches. My own measurements put the bag at 24 inches tall by 19 inches wide and 7 inches deep giving an approximate volume of 2,850 cubic inches or 46 liters. The bag weighs 6 pounds and 7 ounces or 2.9 kilograms. Now to the features of the bag. On top you will find a pouch that is approximately 9 inches by 6.5 inches by 3 inches tall. It has three rows of PALS webbing on the top as well as a row of velcro for attaching identification patches. It has a nice wide zipper with some very nice pulls that are on it. It is a very large pocket. You can see I've stuffed a Nalgene bottle in here so you can see the size. It will easily fit a pair of binoculars. Normally in this top pocket you would put things that you'd want to access frequently. However, there are no subdividing pockets in here. There are no pockets for pens, pencils, um, flashlights, other small miscellaneous items that you might have. For that purpose you may want to get an admin pouch and keep it inside of here or strap it to the top of this pocket. As you can see this is a front loading or panel loading pack. There are six rows of PALS webbing here as well as a block of velcro for identification or morale patches. There is also a flat pocket on the front that runs the full depth of the lid. As we transition to the bottom of the pack you'll notice that there are three more rows of PALS webbing down here as well as a zipper pocket for the rainfly. So inside here is a rainfly. One second while I tuck it out of here. The rainfly is also attached with a little keeper here. Uh, this can be removed and swapped out with a different rainfly if you so choose, or just remove it totally to give you more room inside the pack as this pocket does push into the main compartment of the pack. There are, however, some things missing from the bottom of the pack that you might be used to. There is no drainage hole for the main compartment and there are no additional straps for attaching additional items to the pack such as a sleeping pad, tent, or maybe your outerwear. Now we will look at the carry system of the pack. To start out there's a nice grip handle right here at the top of the pack. The pack also has an internal plastic sheet as well as two aluminum stays that help give the pack its shape and structure. The aluminum stays are accessed via uh, little tabs on the back of the pack, one on each side. The aluminum stays are removable so you can bend them to fit. When we look at the back of the pack, it is nicely padded. In fact, when you look at that uh, bottom lumbar pad, it looks extremely thick and I was wondering how that would carry, uh, if that would make the, the pack feel a little strange on my back. It actually feels pretty good. You don't realize that that padding is that thick. Uh, but there again, there are nice air channels. The shoulder straps are adjustable up and down. So you remove the Velcro, you can position it up and down for height. 
which makes it nice in order to get these to ride appropriately up on your shoulders. The waist belt is again nicely padded with some air channels in it. On the outside there are two rows of PALS webbing. It does have a nice thick belt and buckle. This is also removable via Velcro in the back so you can take it out if you want to. Looking at the shoulder straps themselves, they are nicely padded on the inside. The sternum strap does have its own strap keeper right here so as you adjust it, it can also be slid up and down the shoulder strap for comfort. Up towards the top of the shoulder straps there are D-rings for attaching additional items to your pack as well as load lifter straps to pull the load in towards your back and again the, strap, the webbing here has strap keepers so that's very nice. So overall a very nice carry system on this pack. You may find one thing missing on the shoulder straps and that is a quick release buckle down here. All this is is an adjustment for fit, does not allow you to release the pack quickly. Now to the side pockets of this backpack. This is where the pack lets you get creative about packing your gear. Between the main pocket here and the side pouch down the side, there's actually a flat pocket that runs the full depth of the pack. You can see I can get my arm all the way down and in there. Um, this slot, as you would call it, is about maybe half an inch wide, the seven inches deep and all the way down. Inside there is a D-ring as well as a clip attachment for hanging a hydration platter. The vendor's website says that you can actually get a two liter hydration bladder in here. Uh, might be a little bit tight from my perspective, but the, the Nalgene bottle example, again, it does fit in there quite easily. It will steal space from this outside pouch, however. They do kind of share a little bit there. But this pouch is great for putting long, odd items in. You could put your trekking poles in here. You could put, obviously, an Nalgene bottle or two in there. You could put a fishing rod. You could put an axe. You could put a collapsible saw. I think you probably actually get a Ruger 1022 uh, takedown version with one half uh, in each side of the pack. So if you want to take a small rifle with you for varmint hunting. Um, but again, just a very interesting pocket that allows you to take some long items that normally you have strapped to the back of your pack. Now to the further outside pouch that is mirrored on both sides. This pouch is approximately 4 inches by 7 inches by 21 inches. It has the four rows of PALS webbing, a water bottle pouch down at the bottom, and a compression strap, again with its own strap keeper. The water bottle pouch is a little bit interesting. Um, it's not really deep enough to keep your Nalgene bottle in there. When I did try to use this for my water bottle, my water bottle kept falling out. Uh, so if you're going to attempt to do that, you're going to want to find some way to attach your water bottle to one of these PALS webbing so that you don't end up losing it all over the place. It does have a nice feature though that it does have a strap to cinch it down and the little toggle is attached to the bag with a loopy here so you, and you won't end up losing that. So that is kind of a nice feature but again the other issue I found is that this pouch does actually protrude down into the water bottle pouch so when I would pull my water bottle out the contents of this pouch tended to drift down in there and that would make it much harder to get my water bottle back in so kind of eh does have a nice lid. Again, you can see some of the internal lining material there. When we look inside of this pouch, again, there is another uh, retention hook, so you can put another water bottle in here. And uh, again, the manufacturer's website says that you can actually put a three liter water hydration bladder inside of here. So you can have a two, a three, and double it for the other sides. Again, this is a very, very accommodating pouch very easily does that Nalgene bottle just drop right down in there. So a lot of stuff can get crammed into that pocket on either side of the back. One thing I forgot to mention when I was going over the side pocket, um, down in the corner here, there's actually a bit of a gap in the material. I'm assuming this was by design because it's for both the water bottle pouch and this pouch here that actually will allow water to drain out 
of the, the slash pocket and the water bottle pouch. So that's actually kind of nice there. As I stated before, this is a front loading or panel loading pack, so you will not receive the same stuff factor that you might from a top loading pack. So organizing your uh, belongings becomes very critical. As we open the pack, again you can see the internal lining material there, as well as eight rows of PALS webbing. There is a shelf inside of here that is maintained by some Velcro tabs. You can put this up or down, use it to divide up your gear as you see fit. I have it up just out of the way so I can show you the contents of the bag. As you look inside the bag, on the bottom there are two divider pockets here as well as two rows of PALS webbing. There are also another pocket on each side of the bag as well as more PALS webbing. If you lower the shelf, it does cover the PALS webbing and the pockets on the back of the bag. As you move up the sides of the bag, there are three more little storage pockets to keep your gear organized on each of the vertical sides that you can use. Then on the back there's this little mesh contraption here. And this mesh contraption was originally designed to hold a military radio according to the manufacturer's website. And there are two ports on either side to allow the antenna to go through as well as two more pockets here in the back. Now what I've read what other people have done is they've actually used this space and the little mesh uh, divider here to actually put a small hydration bladder and then route the hydration bladder through the antenna ports. Um, I don't have a bladder that's that small that I can show you but it looks like maybe one of the one liters shorties might fit in there and provide you with some hydration inside of the bag. I should also mention that the dimensions of this inside compartment are 21 inches tall by 11 inches wide by 7 inches deep. So that concludes my overview of the bag. Now to my initial impressions. I've had the bag for several months and I've taken it out for a couple of hikes with about 25 pounds of gear in it to see how it carried and it seemed to do well. There are some things that I like and some oddities. First, the top compartment lacked admin organization. The water bottle pouches seem like an afterthought and are not really functional for me. And there are no straps on the bottom of the pack to lash gear such as a sleeping pad or an outer layer tube. But overall, I have a positive impression of the pack. It is definitely larger in terms of volume than what is listed on the manufacturer's website. The main compartment has tons of organization for small items, and the side pouches give you a lot of flexibility for odd-sized items. So I like this pack and I think it will serve the purpose that I wanted. Hopefully this video helps those of you who are looking for a larger bug out bag or get home bag. If you have any questions or suggestions, please submit them in the comments section. As always, thank you for watching and please subscribe.